How are you today? Good. Great. All right. Let's see where we are here. I'm going to share my, oh, I like that smile. You look happy. <laughs> Did you have a good day at school today? No, today I didn't have school. What did you do? I don't know. What did I do, Mom? Mom, what did I do? Oh, wait a minute. You don't need to ask your mom. Ask yourself. What did you do? What did I do? Yes. Did you read a book? Yes. Play a game? Yes. Take lunch? Yes. Stand on your head? Yes. You did? Walk on your hands? Yes. Feed an elephant? Yes. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yes. I see. Okay, so later when you watch this video, I want you to think about all of the answers that you said yes to, all the questions you said yes to, okay? Okay. All right. We are on the chapter beep, 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 okay? Beep, 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 Okay, so, and we're starting out our uh, chapter with the pronoun we. So we need to look back at the previous page to see who, who is we, all right? So I see Swift. Hero Lady mice. Lady Wonder Whisker, yes, so all the hero mice. So that'd be Swift Paws, Lady Wonder Whiskers, and Geronimo. Okay. Geronimo. Geronimo. We took off into the tunnel carved by the sledge mobile. Okay, the, the sledge mobile drilled through the rock from the sewer into the lab, and so that made a tunnel. Look, what a stench, I said, plugging my nose. What do you think the word stench means if I have to plug my nose? It's very like. Stinky. Yeah, very stinky, very bad smell. We are in the sewers of Muskrat City, exclaimed Swift Paws. What did you expect it to smell like, hero partner? Cheddar Dreams spritz and spray? Now, I don't know what that is, but I assume he means something that would smell good like cheese. Good one, chuckled a voice behind me. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. And what does he mean when he says, good one? What would that mean when he says, good one? I should be, maybe I'll make that pink. Good one what? What does that mean? What does that mean? Good, it's good, it is good. First, let's look at the word chuckled. Chuckled means to laugh. So I want you to think about what just happened. Remember, Swift Paws kind of likes to make fun of Geronimo, right? And so Geronimo says, oh, it stinks. You know, a really bad smell. And so Swift Paws is a little bit sarcastic. You know, he's, he says, hello, we're in the sewer. What did you think it's gonna smell like, cheese? So he's kind of making fun of Geronimo a little bit, right? And he's making a little bit of a joke. And we say his joke is at the expense of Geronimo, which means when people laugh at his joke and say, ha, 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 that's a good one, which means that's a good joke. That was a funny one. You made a funny, you said something funny. That's what he means. That's what they mean when they say good one. But when people are laughing at Swift Paw's joke, who are they really laughing at? Geronimo because Geronimo is the one who said, oh, what a stench, it's so stinky. And because he said that, Swift Pod made fun of him, right? He goes, <laughs> he 
he was like, hello, Geronimo, what do you expect? We're in the sewer. What do you think it's going to smell like? Flowers? And then when people laugh and say, oh, swift pause, that was funny. Ha, 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 good one. They're really laughing at Geronimo. So we say that swift pause, his joke was at the expense of Geronimo. That means that Geronimo is paying the price for um, it is Ger Geronimo is the one that is kind of getting hurt. You know, people are making fun of him when they're laughing at Swift Paw's joke. Well, let's see. We just know this is a voice behind Geronimo. We don't know who it is yet. So we're going to turn the page and Geronimo is going to whirl around. That means swing around, but no one was there. So who could it be? He hears a voice behind him, he swings around, he whirls around, and no one is there. So who do you think it is? Who's the one person in this story that can say something and no one sees him? It's a bad guy. <clears throat> well? It's, it's the bad guy. It's not the invisible bit. This is the bad guy because the bad guy go inside the there. Oh, I forgot that you kind of look ahead and kind of figure things out ahead of me. You know more that's going on than I do. I was thinking it's the invisible thief. Well, let me keep reading and see. Rotten cheese rinds. Okay, that's one of those three word things, right? That they say when they're surprised. Was the stench making me lose my mind? Or was there a ghost on our tails? All right, this expression on our tails, uh, this is a tricky one because the real expression in English is on our tail. Tail just one, not an S at the end. But he, all the author had to do is add the word, the letter S to the end. But when we say that someone is on our tail, it means right behind us, okay? They're like, they can see us, they're right behind us. It doesn't have anything to do with a tail. Okay, so Geronimo speaks to this, what he thinks is a ghost, right? It is just, it's just mouse. And he says, D -d 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 don't hurt us, I stammered. We come in p -p 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 peace. Don't be a super fool, Super Stilton. Swift paws scoffed. It's Griff Mouse. Okay, so it's the invisible thief that's behind them. I think that's who I was kind of thinking. And I, I, don't, I don't think the superheroes think that the invisible thief is a bad guy anymore. Now that they know he's Griff Mouse, and now that they know that he's he really needs the diamonds in order in order to fix his invisibility machine so that he can stop being invisible and start being visible again. So we remember that stammered means when we are really nervous and we say the beginning of a word um, again and again and again, like da 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 don't. We come and pop, 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 peace. Um, this is kind of an expression that we use in English kind of jokingly when we're talking about, um, if you ever see a movie or a TV show or a cartoon, when someone from another planet comes um, to earth or someone on earth goes to another planet and they're meeting an alien, okay? Someone from a different planet. And they say, we come in peace. Don't hurt us. We come in peace, they say. So it's a little bit, a little bit of a joke, I think. Um, I, th I think the author wants us, the reader, to remember that and, and find that kind of funny, that it's implying that Geronimo is wondering if, if this is like an alien or um, he has no idea who it is. <laughs> alien. <laughs> alien. But then... Uh, you know, super still, uh, not super still, but swift pause. He's always making fun of Geronimo. I, I don't really like that about, about swift pause. 
But here is one more example. So this is twice on the same page. No, 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 different page, but twice in two pages that Swift Paws is making fun of Geronimo again. And he's saying, don't be a fool, Geronimo. He scoffed. Remember when we talked about those four words that all mean scoffed? Let me see if I can find them. I'm not sure. If I can, they might be here. No. Oh, here they are. These are the words that mean scoffed, right? So find the red dot here, scoffed. Snickered, snorted, sneered, and scoffed are all a way of saying um, said in a way that's making fun of someone else in a way that's not very nice. And it's something that Swift Paws I think does more scoffing, snorting, snickering, and sneering than anyone else. And it's usually when he's talking to Geronimo. These two are supposed to be friends. I, I don't know. But anyway, Swift Paws is once again making fun of Geronimo and he says, don't be a fool, it's Griff Mouse. So here's our word, scoff. We, we do not want to act like Swift Paws. All right, then Lady Wonder Whisker says, are you sure you want to come along, Professor? Asked Lady Wonder Whiskers. So who's she talking to? La Drift Mouse. Yeah, Professor Drift Mouse. Then she says, it could be dangerous. Do you see the smaller word in dangerous? The suffix is O-U-S. If we get rid of us, what's the word? Us. Danger, danger. Yeah, that's the word right there. And then we can, danger is a thing. And we can turn it into yes. danger. Danger is a thing. Danger is a noun. Danger is a noun, right. And dangerous is an adjective. Adjective. Mm -hmm. Have you learned that, have you learned that, uh, that, that a noun is a person, place, thing? And thing. Or person, place, and thing is yeah. noun. That's right, but there's one more. It's person, place, thing, or idea. Yes, idea is noun too. That's right, and danger is an idea. It's not a person, it's not a place, it's not something it's we can danger hold. Danger is an idea. Mm -hmm, correct. So uh, Griff Mouse says to them, don't worry, he squeaked with a laugh. You won't even know I'm here. Suddenly, that means all of a sudden, Lady Wonder Whiskers' wrist communicator, that's her watch, began pulsating, which means beep, 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 and a red light flashing in a rhythm, like with a beat, like drums. Red light, red light, red light, red light, beep, beep, beep. The amazing super rodent had managed, okay, so that's Lady Wonder Whiskers, had managed to attach the position signaler to the, we'll have to see who, who to, but I wanna tell you that a position signaler is a, is a word for a, in English, we call it a tracker. I don't know if you can read that kind of, it's not very bright color. A tracker is um, Actually, I think most of the time a tracker is against the law, which means that we are there's rules in our country that don't let us use this um, unless it's the police. I think the police maybe could do it, but regular people, I think in real life should not do this. Um, but it lets, you can, it's when you put this little thing on something like a car or they put it on the sledge mobile, and then when the sledge mobile goes, you can look on a map on their watch and you can see the little red light moving. Kind of, well, actually we, we kind of, one thing that we do in Taiwan is we can track the Uber Eats driver, right? But we do that yes. with their, we do that with their permission. Like they know that we're doing that. I think it's okay to do it if, if, um, if they give permission, like with Uber Eats. All right, so they had put that on the sludge mobile. Now, all we had to do was follow the signal. 
Okay, that's the red light going beep, beep, beep as it moves along the map. Ah, Lady Wonder Whiskers. As we ran, I glanced at the super rodent's bright, sparkling eyes. She was so smart and beautiful and strangely <laughs> familiar. <laughs> what do you think that means? He, he said this two times. Mm hmm Yep. Who does he be, who do you think she really is? Mm, Priscilla. Yeah, I think she is too, yeah. Okay, so you can see her watch. Uh, it's not a red light, it looks more like a white light, right? That, yes. You can also tell, this is where they are, they're in the sewers, it's underground, it's those tunnels with the really stinky, stinky water. All right. I was still thinking about Lady Wonder Whiskers when her wrist communicator began flashing at an alarming rate. Beep, 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 beep. I think it starts getting faster the closer you get to it. When I looked up, Tony, his henchman, and the sludge mobile, his henchmen are those characters one, two, and three, were assembled. That means they were gathered together in the same place in the tunnel in front of us. Oh no, they're going to turn on the invisibility machine, whispered Griff Mouse. As we crept closer, we heard Slick Fur say, the, but boss, why are we testing out the machine here? I thought we were bringing it back with us. Duh. I thought the same thing, agreed one. Me too, added two. Me too, muttered three. I mean, me three. I mean, whatever they said. Well, why do you think the author is having them talk like that? What does the author want us to be thinking about one, two, and three? They go to... I don't know. Oh, I know because one, two, and three sees dr drama. The hero might were there. Well, do you think that the author wants us to think that one, two, and three are very smart and do a lot of thinking, or that they're just not very smart and do whatever Tony tells them to do? Yes. Right, so he wants to he wants them to sound like they're not very smart, and so he has them saying like the that mean that's if you have someone say that it's kind of um, you can you you can use that word or that it's not a word actually it's just a sound but you can use it to make them sound like they're not very smart yeah you know just they say the I thought the same thing the you know and then just. Me too, me too, me three. You know, I mean, they, that doesn't make any sense. So they're getting kind of confused. Tony looked, although there is kind of a joke in English if with, with kids. If you have like three, you know, a bunch of kids together and one of them says, I have a great idea. Like I want to um, play basketball. And then another one says, me too. And then another one says, me three. And me three doesn't make sense, but they say it to be funny because when you say me too, T-O-O, -O, that's what they mean. When they say me too, it means also, me also, I want to do it also. But that T-O-O, -O, um, it sounds like another word. What other word says two? What has a different meaning? The number two, right? Which is T-W-O. And so they kind of make a, a joke about that. So here, I'll show you what I mean. It's kind of a funny thing. So if someone says me too, right? I want to also, that too, this has the same sound, right? Yes. And so if you think of it like this, then what number comes after the number two? Okay. So sometimes to be funny, 
if one kid says, me too, the next one says, me three. And they're just being funny because they're like, two sounds like this two, okay? But one, two, and three here are not, when he says right here, me three, he's not trying to be funny. He's just confused because he's not very smart. And the author wants us to be laughing at these three characters, one, two, and three, for not being very smart or knowing what they're talking about, okay? All right? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, moving on. Tony looked like he was ready to explode. Now, usually the word explode is when something goes kaboom, right? Like I showed, uh, I showed you the like video. Uh, like uh, Mentos. Yeah. Going into the Coca-Cola. Yeah. I showed you that video, right? Yeah. Or the... Oh, ask my mom. Oh, uh, no. Or the volcano. Right, yeah. right, right. The fire go out. That's right, that's right. So that would be an explosion. And um, when we say that someone looks like they're ready to explode, that does not mean that we think they're going to go kaboom. They're that, that ready to angry, be that's angry. Right. That's right, yep. Okay, he began to scream, waving his paws in the air like a crazed rat. First of all, you shouldn't think. He says, I'm the brains of this operation. Okay, so when you say here, I'm the brains of this operation, usually the word operation is talking about a doctor doing surgery on someone, right? Where they, they have someone go to sleep and they cut them open and they fix the bones or the problem and they sew them back up and they say, okay, you're fixed. But here, the word operation can also talk about the business that someone is doing, kind of the mission or the, um, the work, the project that someone is doing, the plan that they have. So when he says, I'm the brains of this operation, he's like, I'm the only one that's making a plan. I'm the only one that's going to do any thinking. I don't want to hear your idea. Don't do any thinking. Don't tell me what to do. You may not make the plan. That's just me, only me, all by myself. Everyone else stop thinking. So that's kind of what he's saying. And he says, and I do all the thinking around here. Got it? I'm the boss, the big cheese, the head rodent. This right here, the big cheese, is something that we say in English, and it means the boss. So sometimes we call the boss the big cheese. <clears throat> However, I would not call my boss the big cheese. <laughs> I don't think he would like it. Let's see. Um, Tony shrieked. Okay, shrieked is when you say something like you're yelling it in a way that hurts your ears. Anyway, I have a very good reason for testing the machine here. Her name is Mrs. Sludge. That's right. If my wife, Teresa, sees those diamonds, she will rip that machine apart in a flash to get her paws on the star-studded gemstone. Yep. Teresa sure loves her jewel, jewelry. Okay, so he wants to try out the machine right now so that his wife, Teresa, does not get to see those diamonds. All right, any questions on this page? No. All right. Next page. Moving on here. While Tony rambled on and on, we crept closer and closer to the sewer rat. Finally, Lady Wonder Whiskers burst from the shadows. Give up, sewer slime, she yelled. The sewer rat's jaws dropped open in shock as the athletic super rodent of my heart leaped forward. What a mouth. That's Geronimo talking about Lady Wonder Whiskers. <laughs> what a mouth. She's amazing. Isn't she wonderful? Let's just all watch her do it again. Maybe we could hit rewind. Play it again. <laughs> so 
Uh, a couple words here. Rambled on and on is what Miss Camp does. It's when we talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. <laughs> and then Kristen wants to say, Mom, just get to the point. And I, you're like, what are you trying to say? And I'm like, oh, I'll be done in a minute. I just have to keep going and going and going and going. That's rambling on and on and on. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, jaws dropped open. Okay, right here, jaws dropped open. When we're really surprised, we say my jaw dropped open like this. So this is your jaw. It's the bottom part of your um, face. And if your jaw drops open, your mouth opens, and it's like, and that means you're surprised. Uh, okay, any questions on this page? No. Let's take a close up here. Up oh, here they come to the rescue. And over here, we've got the, huh? Oh, and there's the, uh, there we can see the invisibility machine. All right, the invisible hero mouse. Oh my goodness, did you see the title of this chapter? No. Next, the drama will be invisible. Don't tell me, don't tell me. I want to be surprised. <laughs> All right, let's see. Tony looked even angrier than before. Now I'm really annoyed by you hero mice. He squeaked in disgust. Sewer rats. Give these super goons the lesson they deserve. What a second later, one, remember the three, um, the three henchmen are one, two, and three. So one hurled himself at swift paws, but the hero mouse was one paw step ahead of him. And he said, costume, bowling ball mode. Hmm. So he turned his yellow super cape into a bowling ball. Have you ever gone bowling? Yes. Oh. I got and some here to bowl and That's right. Ball. That's right. So is there a place to go bowling here in Taichung? No. Oh where did you go bowling? Taiwan didn't have bowling. No? You know I'm yes. pretty sure I'm pretty sure it does because some of the teachers I work with at Morrison have gone bowling. Um, but I have not gone bowling in Taiwan. So you can, see, you can see he turns into a bowling ball because take a look. Can you find the red dots? Yes. There's three. And, you, and your finger going shut. Yeah, you have to have three, your thumb, I think, and two fingers, right? Okay, let's see. Do you know the word um, angry? And then yes. the word angry ends in a Y. Angry, angrier, yeah. angriest. That's angriest? Uh, actually, we don't say angriest, the angriest. Huh, the angriest person. Yeah, I guess we would do that. So we take the word angry, and then we're going to turn the Y into an I, right? And then add the ER, right? Okay, Tony looked even angrier than before. All right, annoyed. Do you know the word annoyed? Yes. Right, so someone who, if you're really bothered by someone, then you are annoyed. How about disgust? You know, I know the word disgusting. We use an adjective disgusting to describe really gross things. Like, like, ooh, that's disgusting, right? Like if you go to the sewer, the smell would be disgusting. So if something is disgusting, we just don't like it at all. There's nothing good to say about it. It's just like, ooh, that's gross. Disgust often goes with the preposition in, and we say in disgust, okay? so. If you, if they speak, if they say something in disgust, then it means that they are just like, oh, that's disgusting, right? I just really am annoyed. I don't have anything good to say about this. I'm really unhappy about this. 
And then he says, give those goons a lesson they deserve. Well, I really don't like that phrase. Um, it's what a bully would say, right? If, if, if a bully or a mean person says, give those two guys or give that person a lesson he deserves, they're not talking about a good lesson or a good thing. They're talking about maybe beating them up or um, knocking them over or um, something really mean. And so um, it's not a good phrase and it's not said by a good person usually. Um, hurled himself. Now, you know, one, two, and three are the bad guys. We have to remember that these are the bad guys. And so we're going to see some bad words because bad guys do bad things. And so one of the things they do, one of them, number one, he hurls himself. That means he just runs into swift paws as, uh, you know, kind of like a football player, you know, ready to just push him over with all of his weight. And remember, he's really heavy. Do you remember what one, two, and three look like? No. You want to see? Very big, very big. Yeah, very big. Um, okay, and then, but Swift Paws got out of his way. Okay, so he, it says instantly, that means like suddenly, like right away. Swift Paws transformed, we know this word, right? Changed into a giant yellow bowling ball. Then he rolled right into one and two. Right, because what does a bowling ball do? It knocks over the pins. Here it's knocking over one and two. Boing. And sent them flying. Meanwhile, three had attacked Lady Wonder Whiskers. Unfortunately for him, he hadn't considered her incredible martial arts skills. Do you know what martial arts are? No. It's like Kung Fu or Taekwondo. Yes, it's like Taekwondo. Yes. Okay. So, wow. Lady Wonder Whiskers can do that. Geronimo must just be like, oh, look at her. Isn't she amazing? Wow. <laughs> she can do everything. All right. So here's the sounds of Lady Wonder Whisker in action. Bump, slam, smack, pow, pop. And what is a... What does Geronimo say? He says, cosmic cheddar chunks. That's it, those three words. Is there nothing the super rodent of my dreams cannot do? <laughs> and so in a matter of minutes, all three of Tony's bodyguards were laid out on the ground like pins in a bowling alley. Strike. All right, let's take a quick look at um, a bowling alley and then we're going to, I'm gonna put my star here. Right there. Okay, now I'm going to show you um, a quick bowling alley and uh, maybe we'll see um, someone actually bowling a strike. Let's see if we can find that. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. Bowling a strike. Bowling a strike. Let's see if we can see one here. A nice quick one. Bowling a strike in slow motion. That's the number two one. This one? Oh, there's fast motion. Here comes slow motion. One bowling pin knocks another bowling pin, knocks another bowling pin, and all of a sudden they all go down. Those are the bowling pins. Now it's bowling a strike. So we call it a strike if, uh, if all of the pins go down at one time by one ball. Have you ever bowled a strike? Yes. Oh, good job. It's hard to do that. You must be a very good bowler. All right, Archie, time to say so long. Chat, chat. All right, I'm happy to see you. I missed you this weekend and I'll see you tomorrow.